I would like to call on Jonesy again to take the podium because he's going to introduce another one of our world-renowned personalities. Um, you know, Trinidad is very um, is an island full of greats. So we have one upcoming, and to introduce this person, I would like to call again on Jonesy to do so. Do we have professionals in our Presbyterian show? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is something you should be proud of. I've been entertaining for about 40 years, and I didn't so see what's, what's happening today. As the love of Jesus Christ permeates profusely throughout this auditorium. And the milk of human kindness is effervescent. And each bubble pervades this atmosphere. It has set the right forum and the correct ambience. The French people say ambience. And we should all be proud of ourselves. To God be the glory. This auditorium was rented from 8 to 8 p.m. But then I thought that um, I should cut down the time. But thinking about it, it should have been from 8 a.m. to 8 a.m. tomorrow. <laughs> Is that a fact? Yes. <laughs> okay, um, on another note, the person I'm about to introduce, sometime in 1927, in a small village called Karatal, in Komoto, near Sandy Grandi, about four, half four in the morning, as the people were boiling, nowadays we say percolating, the Arubasta coffee, and the aroma pervaded that little tiny village. Five gunshots rang out, put up, pop, 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 pop. I come correct? <laughs> no, in those days, when I hear five gunshots, people was a signal. This is the way people used to talk. When they heard three gunshots, they knew in the village a baby girl was born. So when they heard five gunshots, they said, hey, there's another one, Tabby. <laughs> and this person was born in Paratal, Komoto, Bayer San Grande, Trinidad, Western Hemisphere, planet Earth. <laughs> we in the Milky Way? Because there are some other, um, other we. <laughs> because every day, according to the song I sang, every day, the creator is creating new galaxies. That is in the song. So, I was fortunate to listen to this guy. When I was about four, performing a Bonaventure Press, he's 19 years older than I am, so he was 23. He was doing his thing in comedy. When I was seven, I performed with the Bonaventure School Crier at Radio Trinidad then. He was performing, so he was about 13. When I was 13 years old, I used to listen to his show on radio with Sam Ghani, etc. Jail and Fear. Everything I hear in this man. When I was 13, I was privileged to see him perform at Bonaventure Presbyterian School. That's nine years <laughs> Probably want to know my age. I commented that just now. So he was performing when I was, that's 13. When I was 23 years old, two years after I started to work, I went to Expo Grenada. This gentleman was performing, representing Trinidad. There was Duke, there was Bummer, Sparrow Sang, and this guy was there. And I felt proud talking to him because I used to listen to his shows. That's Pearl, Pearl's airport, Grenada. He broke down the place for Trinidad night, the mashup. Them fellas who talk about we were mashup place. Them are jokers. They can't mash up no place. He mash up the place. They call it true blue. After the Yankee came and they mash up the place for that. <laughs> but he really mash up the place in 1969. October 1963. No, 69. 
But so we kept. I, at one stage, I wanted to see this man, class, you have class, like the puppeteers here. I said, well, I want to get on to talk to them. I want to write some jokes for him because I used to do every week. I had to do three jokes in school. We had a period called Homeroom. They should bring back this, this or the curriculum. That's what they call it, curriculum. Bring back concert, bring back local talent. I had to do three jokes every week on, in my class. So I used to take a little thing from him. I make it up own joke. Then in 1974, I was privileged to do a taping call on Let's Laugh show. He was there, he was the renowned comedian. And uh, when he went to tape, I look at the see big damn man clapping boy, he and Maurice James, the devil big Sawati. I had a little pee the business, all the terms are using. Sawati mean big, little pee what this guy. We're going to that too. So I said, when I do so like, give me a punchline, I, I peep so. I see this man clapping. I see Horace James clapping. I said, well, Josie, you know you're good, but keep them clapping, you're real good. <laughs> well, I rate up myself in a humble way. You bring it on, man, don't worry. So, I, was by, I went to the embassy one day, and I went down by Mr. Govaya to get a little hot dog to go back to the embassy, because today, now the fingerprinting here. Yeah? Well, you know that? Everybody here could go, right? We have a thing happen. So then we reached down there, boy. Mr. Govaya said, he used to call him Mr. G. He said, look, your partner come in the cell back. I said, who's that? He said, why are you calling me? I said, look, okay. I said, he said, talk. He said, he said, Joe, see how you're going? He said, all right. So what are you doing now? Well, I learned nothing in show business, let me tell you. Anytime a talent scout or a producer of any show, ask you what you're doing, you're doing nothing right now. You have time. <laughs> I said, I do nothing. He said, you can come on my radio channel, you take it and show. You can see how the program going. I said, yeah. I said, but wait. I have to drop two hot dogs for my sister. No, she waited for a visa. He said, all right, all right, all right. I fixed up that. When I go in there, I watch the show. He said, um, you want to come next week and bring five jokes, man? Huh? Every day we do one of yours. Boy, I feel it real good, you know, to work with that man on a radio show. And for this, I must always be thankful. I'm thankful, grateful. I worked four years with him on radio. Nobody in showbiz, let me tell you all that. Nobody in showbiz ever give anybody a break on their show. If you check trade ideas and check how the artists ball it, nobody gives them a break. So thankful to him. So I say, wait, I'm on this man performing all about. Let me tell you what he performed. Every village, every jail and fair, every concert. We don't have two radio stations, but every radio station then. Right? <laughs> two radio stations. We have 14, now we have 50, but we're going to be on all the radio stations. All the channels at the time. I said, this man is great, boy. I'm on performing in Howard University. 20 year contract year. When we were in college, I said, Josie, if you have to pattern your style in comedy, that is the man. He and Jerry Lewis. You better look at Jerry Lewis. <laughs> and you don't make my face at Jerry Lewis, no way. That is the business. So I said, but we hear this man in Woodford Square coming live, jail and fear. He going to the university. He going to the churches. You have to be great to do clean comedy. You have to be great. To do clean comedy, I'm telling you, it's hard, very hard. It's a gift, it's a talent. People could do smarty comedy. They're, um, they're full of jokers. They're not comedians, they're jokers. Right? So I said, but wait, this man. So I've been in the show four years, listening to him. For 30 years, I've known him since 1974 as friends. All you do the maths, I'm not going into maths. I'm not teaching, you are teaching. Right, so all these years, this man has been performing. He's 79 years. He born on the 20, I tell you, the 24th of July, when all the head them gone, 1927, right? He's a Leo, by a Leo also. By born in August, August 8th, I was 60. How are you looking for that? Tell me. Yeah. God bless you, God bless, right? So, this man has performed throughout the world. Canada, USA. Until a 20 year contract in Harvard University. Every place in Trinidad, all of the Caribbean. All over, under. 
And ladies and gentlemen, the man I'm going to bring on today, who was born on the 24th of July, 1927, in Caratal Village, Komoto, when they have five gunshots, pow, 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 pow. He was Ramdin Ramjatan. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to bring to you a man, let's say it, let's say it again, a man who been doing comedy for the last 57 years, going for 60 years. Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring on stage John, let's say it, John, John Ashton. To me just now, he wasn't jealous. I saw you watching me cook, yeah. and I was feeling embarrassed. Okay. Anyway, well, it's honey. Okay. That is the butt name of my profession. This is John Agitation with true life sensation, designed for your mental relaxation. <laughs> But well, before I start talking to all you, I have a little problem. And I want to share it with you. Now I take it that all of you are church people. Right? <laughs> Whether you go to Catholic Church, you go to Presbyterian Church, you go to Jehovah, it doesn't matter, you go to church. So I sleeping on my bed last night. And I had a little bit of worries. What you will tell them church people? <laughs> that depends on what is it? For a man who does lie. <laughs> and with that in my mind, I fall asleep. And while I sleep, and I dream I'm dead. <laughs> now that's a serious thing to happen to a fellow like me. But not long after I'm dead, the boy walk up to heaven in style. <laughs> Fala say, hey, young man, come. <laughs> Who are you? I said, I'm John Agitation, sir. He said, I'm waiting you walking in like, here, like you're the boss here. Listen, we have rules here. I said, sir, I just did. It's not here, did it not happen? It's here, I have to come. <coughs> he said, well, you probably have to come here, but we have rules. Here are two pieces of chalk. Go on that blackboard, they big like that, eh? and write all your sin. I have to check you out before I could decide where you're going. Well, you boy nervous. I start to write, Papa. Before I have went through, the two chalk done. <laughs> said, so, I don't know your name is I'm St. Peter. I said, well, St. Peter, I have a problem. He said, oh, yeah, what's your problem? I said, well, I don't know if this has always happened. But my job done, you know. <laughs> so, okay, no problem. This is normal. This happens all the time. You see that step there? Take that step. And go down there, you'll see a room. In that room, have all the chalk you want. Take how much you want. But boy, if you see chalk in the place, <laughs> every shelf is chalk. Well, I was very considerate. I take two more sticks from my pocket. And I, as I take this step coming up, let me show you how it was. <laughs> this is true, eh? Another joke. As I take this step, I bounce up with my reverend. <laughs> I say, Rev, you dead too? I say, yes, John. I say, I know what happened, you know. You were out of job. Yes, 
ayo ada harap lakon to do something for these people, for we people. And what he wanted to do, he was such a, he didn't even know himself. And he put agricultural farms in Wallerfield, in Carlson Field, and trying all kind of development to build the economy of this country without success. Because after the first year, the farms start to fail. He had a problem, and this is how we handle the problem. I want you to uh, doing this so you can get an idea what he looked like. <laughs> and this conversation took place at White House in Marvel Road. <clears throat> he called in his senior economist, whose name was Mr. Rampasad, Frank Rampasad. The older people will remember. And this was the dialogue that took place, Mr. Rampasad. You must have heard that this country is heading into a financial crisis. We cannot get any loans from Great Britain, and all our negotiations with the United States of America for any grants has failed. Mr. Rampasad, we have no money. I need your advice. And Rampasad said, Doctor, if you follow the trend of history, you will see that any nation in the world who declare war against the United States of America, after they lose the war, America usually rehabilitate the countries. That's what Grandpa said. And the doctor looked at him and said, and suppose we win the war. <laughs> in all their problems, they declared war against the United States of America. And today, Grenada is like America. They rehabilitated the island. Rehabilitated, rehabilitated the island. However, another international thing that happened, all in that break, yeah. that amused me in the course of my career, is when President Bush wanted to get into Iraq. And this is how he went about it. I'm talking too much of good English now. I don't talk good English, I just talk bad English. He went to the United Nations Security Council and tell them he must go into Iraq because Iraq have weapons of mass destruction. All you remember reading that? Be with me. I don't lie. And the United Nations tell him, 
Bush, you sit down. We have to prove first what you're saying is correct. So we're going to send our inspectors, and if they find the weapons you're talking about, then we will decide whether you should go in or not. Right? Which is a logical thing. And they send the inspectors, they call back Bush and say, well, we have found no weapon of mass destruction, you know, Mr. Bush. So we can't let you go in. A few months later, he made a return bout, he said, to the United Nations Security Council, I must go into Iraq. You know why? Saddam is insane. <laughs> this is what he said. Saddam is insane. I must go into Iraq. But while he telling the United Nations Security Council, Saddam is insane, the Iraqis were not saying that. They say it is Saddam Hussein. <laughs> now we're going to talk. Let me get down to myself. Well, I get up the other morning and I get in dressed to go by a friend in Cascade, Papa. Now, I have friends too, you know. All of you are my friends. And when we meet in church on Sunday morning, we have a way with us shake each other hand. All of us do that too. Yes. And part of the sermon are talking about, you know. Part of the sermon we have to greet each other. So, I see Reverend Barry Ram here. I want nice Reverend. See the poor on the way? Yes. Poor fellow, he had to resign. <laughs> I don't know why you take up a profession like me, we don't resign. <laughs> when we're dead, we're done with that. <laughs> and I want to tell you, before I get down, this happened in reality. Sir <coughs> Paul was a captain, he is still, I don't know, since he retired, probably he retired. The chairman of the IRO. All you know what that is? Yeah. Tell me what it is. Yeah. Right. So their executive meet one evening and they said, boy, we have to talk about the crime situation in this country. Gangani, you agree with that? Talk to me. See, what? Anybody know sign language? <laughs> That's happening. <laughs> yes, they said it is imperative that we do something about the crime situation. So one fella get up and say, listen, I have a suggestion. They're all religious preachers and leaders and things like that. You know. So they are concerned. Too many people getting killed in Trinidad. And one fella said, listen, Mr. Cyril Paul, we have to get the Bible to people. Let them read the Bible. And if they are reading the Bible, they will know that they cannot give life. Why take it? We want people to understand that. Let me reach the Bible to people. So well, how are we going to do that? I say, well, first thing, we have to reduce the price of Bible. <laughs> I would suggest you that. Somebody ring it up, man. You're in trouble. You're getting trouble with this bed, and some woman will feel you want to get married. Well, they will say you want to get divorced. Yes! So they suggested they want volunteers to go and sell Bibles. That was a good move, and I do you agree with that? Yeah. yeah, that was a good move. So they asked for a lunch, the fellow put up his hand. He said, how much you want? He said, Rev, give me two. He gave me two Bible. And you, he said, give me four. I'm going to start with four. He said, well, let me tell you, if I just sell out your Bibles and you want more, come to the library. I will uh, register it in the book and give you. I kind of stopped when the fellow in the back, they put up his hand. Give it to ten. 
Germans are very good how they talk. How you gonna say that maybe? It's a good 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 try. Give me ten. Friday they come to balance. Or who sell? What is sell? Fella sell it two. And then the clan sell it four. Some sell it three. He's talking fella. How much you sell? This is rev rev rev. Sell up all. Say boys, I could sell. But what you tell them people? Say me I I just tell them. Sell it. Bye bye. Bye bye. You have to, to, to buy it, you know. I, I, I could re read it for you. Frequency there is begging it. That'd be blind. 
help the blind. I don't know where so much of blind people come to school. They just run away from the blind school. However, I had 25 cents in my pocket. I dropped it in the hand. But as I was walking away, like a moody fella. So I said, I wonder if it's he boy. I said, let me go and make sure. I said, Henry, is you what? How long you get blind, bro? I said, I just see this. He said, you know your mouth. <laughs> I said, well, what happened? He said, I could tell you the truth, you know. But what you want, eh? You ain't real blind, you know. He's a blind partner, man, you're going to see a movie and I'm holding on for him.